Joining me now is the former CIA director, John Brennan. He's an NBC News senior national security and intelligence analyst and the New York Times bestselling author of an important and very relevant book right now, Undaunted, My Fight Against America's Enemies at Home and Abroad, which has a brand new epilogue for the paperback release. Uh, director Brennan, good to see you. Thank you for being with us this morning. I, I'd like to get your evaluation of the likelihood. Vladimir Putin's been talking about nuclear weapons. Joe Biden then responded on Thursday night uh, with, with, with some very serious talk about it. What's your evaluation of both the likelihood and what you know and can tell us to be the intelligence about this? Well, Holly, as you pointed out, um, the Russian forces in Ukraine have suffered major setbacks and losses over the last several months. And that is good news as far as the Ukrainian forces being able to go on the offensive. However, there are worrisome implications as a result of that, as Putin gets more and more pushed into a corner. This clearly has been a debacle for him, and it increasingly is being viewed, I believe, by Putin as an existential threat. And that's why I think the concern is that he might opt for some reckless decisions or make reckless decisions to include the potential use of tactical nuclear weapons on Ukrainian soil. That really does not have a good military um, reason to do that. However, I think he's being pushed by those who are on his right, as you pointed out, the head of the Wagner Group, the, the, the Chechen leader, and others, to be much more aggressive in this military effort inside of Ukraine. And I think what President Biden was mentioning the other day in terms of the concerns he has is that the first time use of a nuclear weapon in a war situation since World War II really raises the specter of some very rapid escalation that could include uh, the, a, some type of confrontation between NATO and Russia. And that's why I think he is saying that we cannot be dismissive of these threats that are coming out of Russia, where, whereby they suggest that they will use whatever means at their disposal to um, achieve victory in Ukraine. And I, again, this is a very, very worrisome time as uh, the Ukrainians continue to push back against uh, Russia uh, in a very, very effective fashion. Many of us have watched movies about this, certainly in the older days when this seemed more of a reality. Uh, tell me how it would play out. First of all, there are a range. Russia's got uh, 11 or 1,200 of these nuclear weapons, as does the United States. Uh, some of them are really big and really dangerous. Some of them are smaller. Uh, and in, in the movies, Russia launches a nuclear weapon, uh, possibly on an American target. America then uh, launches one back, and the world goes up in a, in a nuclear plume. The U.S. reaction to a tactical nuclear weapon, particularly if it's, it's, it's relatively small, would not necessarily be a nuclear attack on Russia. No, uh, and I will leave it to the Biden administration to determine exactly how best they are going to respond. But as has been said publicly, uh, it would be catastrophic. And I do think that there would be probably a combination of actions that the United States and its NATO allies would take, not only on the sanctions front, because there are some additional sanctions that can be levied against Russia that would really be debilitating for its economy. But I do think that there probably would be some type of military response what that might involve is unclear. I do not believe that we would respond with a, a nuclear strike against Russia, but I do think we would make a very clear to the Russians that this use of a tactical nuclear weapon, as you point out, it can range from a very small, uh, less than half a kiloton uh, tactical nuke uh, to something that is larger, uh, depending on where it is and how many of them are used. I think right now the National Security Council is looking at those options so that they are well prepared. I do think that it's still unlikely at this point that Putin will opt for that, but you cannot uh, dismiss the potential that it could happen in the not too distant future. People like you, the former director of the CIA, current director of the CIA, you have to evaluate uh, Russia's capabilities, which from a nuclear perspective, we understand better than even their normal military capabilities because of treaties and, and, and counts of these things that we have. What becomes very, very, very hard to evaluate is intent. Uh, what Vladimir Putin is thinking right now, how uh, cornered he feels and what he might do. One of the, the difficulties of countries that have nuclear weapons that they use as a deterrent is once you've used it, uh, it changes the whole calculus. W what do we need to think about uh, Vladimir Putin's thinking to understand what he might do here? 
Well, I, I think his fortunes continue to decline, and I do think that he is going to be seeing this increasingly as a threat to his very political survival. And that's why he needs to think about how he's going to reverse the trajectory of this conflict. He doesn't have a lot of good options uh, available to him. As you pointed out, the Russian military has seriously underperformed. And I don't think he has any confidence that conventionally he's going to be able to really turn the tide. He has this partial mobilization. I don't think it's going to have much of an effect on the battlefield. And so I, I do think that he tends to listen to his right wing. He doesn't want to be perceived as weak. Uh, and as anti-war demonstrations and protests and criticisms grow in Russia, uh, I do think he's going to swing toward his right wing support to make sure he is, continues to have their support, which might push him into this direction to include the possible use of, again, nuclear weapons uh, inside of Ukraine that again would just make his situation worse. I don't believe it's going to help him at all. He would become a total uh, international pariah. Mm -hmm. And I do think it would even lead the Chinese and the Indians and others who have been willing to at least look the other way on Ukraine to, to now uh, then condemn uh, such use. An important point because India buys uh, a lot of that oil that no one else is buying from Russia. And that is a major source of their funding for continuing this battle in Ukraine. And, and even India would now, as a nuclear armed country, would have to think twice about supporting that sort of action. John Brennan, good to see you, sir. Thank you for being with us. The former CIA director and NBC News senior national security and intelligence analyst, John Brennan.